Welcome. This Digital Dimensions CAD cast covers enterprise PDM templates using automation for folder and file creation. My name is Bill Mitchell. So when we talk about templates within enterprise PDM, whether they be folder templates or file templates, we're going to be creating a way to standardize data as well as provide an easy way to consistently direct the files to the appropriate location. Folder templates can be created along with subfolders and allow files to be placed into subfolders whenever the templates ran. File templates automatically create files from seed files and can inherit values from either the template card that's presented to the user or from the project folders that the files are ultimately stored in. The first step in creating a template is to create the folder card and the file cards as they'll be used in the final production vault. This establishes the metadata requirement that's going to be need to be captured by the templates as well as allow us an ability to quickly create template cards for a consistent user interface, meaning that your file and folder cards can be saved as template cards um, within the vault. The variables on the cards can be reused often, so make sure that you don't create unnecessary amount of variables. Um, you can reuse variables across different file types. The next step is to map the logic for the variable usage, meaning we can decide, decide what files or what what areas of our template capture what information from the users and then how that information gets pushed into the files through the variable mappings. So let's go ahead and go to the card editor and take a look at our production vault folder card. So I'm going to change the card type to folder card and then we can see the user interface as it will be displayed whenever a user selects a folder in the vault. Selecting on the different controls you can see that the different controls are mapped to the different variables along with any special values that we want to capture. For, exa for example, the user login or today's date. Uh, we can also just capture you know, regular project information or use pull-down menus to standardize inputs uh, like project location, city, state, and so on. So if we go take a look at the template card that I created um, for this example, We'll see that the user interface is identical to the folder card, so that way the users are presented with the same thing. You can, if you select on the background of the card, you can see over on the right side that one is a folder card, and then selecting on the template card, the card type is selected as a template card. If you do a simple file save as from your folder card, you can save as a template card to reuse that interface. For this particular project, I want the project number to be automated meaning I want it to pull from a serial number um, that I already have set up in my vault. So on the folder card, I want that to be a text value, but coming down to the folder template card, I want the project number, rather than be a text value, to be linked to a serial number, and then for my serial number, I'm going to select the project number. That way, whenever the template runs, it's going to go out to my uh, project number, serial number generator, and pull the next number in line. So let's go ahead and create a new template. The first thing to decide is how we want the user to find this. You can do that through a menu string. So this is what's going to appear whenever the user right clicks inside the vault. In this case, I'll just say new project. The next are the permissions to execute as, meaning that we can use the permissions from the logged in user. So whatever perm permissions they have in the vault is what the template uses. If we want to create an environment where there's a special folder permissions, or the template requires permissions to do certain things, we can also run with elevated permissions. I'm going to go ahead and go to my template cards and pull in the folder template card that I created. Notice that all the controls and variables that were mapped are automatically pulled into this. The column immediately to the right are the template variables. The template variables are basically the runtime variables that will capture the user's input and then push them from the template variable into the card variable. And then from the card variable, as the file or the folder gets written into the vault, that information is, will be placed into that file automatically for us, and then the template variable is purged. So a template variable is really just a runtime variable for use with the uh, enterprise PDM templates. So whenever we create template variables, uh, enterprise PDM doesn't automatically create them. But a general best, best practice is to preface the variable name with a T underscore. That way, as you're using the template, you know, template wizard, 
um, you can distinguish a template variable from a standard variable. As we're creating the templates, you can see that we have the ability to prompt to show the user. Now if our card doesn't have a control on it, and we've created a template variable, uh, whenever we run the template, the prompt to show the user is what's going to be displayed. This is a, putting something in there in the prompt to show the user is a good troubleshooting tool. That way if you forget to add a control and you receive a prompt, you know exactly what data is being looked for uh, by the, the variable whenever it's running. These template variables generally should have a name that is fairly close to the final card variable that's going to be written just for clarity's sake. So then whenever we go in and create the variable for the project number, I'll go ahead and put in the, the prompt, but really at the, at the end of it all, because I generated the template variable, or because I linked the control on the card to a serial number, I really want to go over and link that to a serial number counter. So then the template variable will generate the serial number for me. The card is already set to use that. If you have the production folder card set to look for a serial number, you'll actually get a double count on the variable or on the serial number. Going over the data types, you can see that we can process a number of things, environment variables, format strings, you know, things like date, time, and so on. Um, if we want to build a, a text string to, to automatically put in. In this particular instance, I'm just going to put in a serial number generator. So now once I've created all my template variables, I simply have to map um, each variable to the next variable. Now it looks like I forgot one, so I can go ahead and create to create a, another template variable. Now just because um, now we, we do need to have a value for every card variable, otherwise it'll be, be left blank. So when I go to the folder structure, I can go ahead and build out the folder structure as I want it to appear in my production vault. So in this case, I want a root folder or a folder at the root of my vault named projects. So I go ahead and select the yellow button, create projects, and then I can create a subfolder within that. If I use the t underscore proj number variable, that's going to pull the runtime template variable for project number and name the folder with that serialized project number data. I can also create sub-projects by selecting the green folder. I can go ahead and create a folder called CAD data. And then if I select the button again, I can create a nested subfolder, maybe called imported files. If I wanted to tee off of the top level, I just have to select whatever folder I want to be the parent. And then I can create additional subfolders. So every time that this template's ran, it's going to generate a new project number and also generate those four subfolders. Right-clicking on the project number or on the root variable, um, I can select the rights for this, so I can inherit rights from the parent folder, or I can add special rights. And then this part is, is critical in that I am going to map the template variables to the final uh, folder card that is written to the vault. So this is where the data goes from what the user has entered into the template form, and then as the folder is getting created, gets placed into the final uh, into the final folder as it's written to, into the archive. Okay, so the next step is to select whatever icon we want to appear next to our menu string. This isn't a requirement, it's just kind of a user interface thing that makes it look a little bit cleaner. And then finally, we select what users and groups we want to have access to this particular template. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this a test. So if we switch back to Windows Explorer, since we're already logged into the vault, anywhere that I select within the vault, if I right-click, go to New, you can see that I now have my new project menu item. It presents the card, gives me the next 
um, serial number from my project number, serial number generator, and then presents the fields as their, uh, so that the user can put in the information. Always remember to use pull down menus with pre populated data if something like project location or you know, standardized data um, is critical. So when I select OK, you can see that it creates the projects folder, creates the subfolders for me automatically, and then even the nested subfolder within that. So that's the project folder template. If I select the folder, you can see that the data card is populated based on what was presented, what was entered into the template card. So the next thing to take a look at is creating uh, files, or creating file templates. We can add that to our existing uh, folder template by going down to the Files and Folders section and then expanding the folder structure and selecting the folder that I want the new file to be placed in whenever the templates ran. You can select the new file icon and then I'm presented with a dialog box to map out to the file that I want to use as a seed file. So within my vault I've got a SOLIDWORKS file uh, called SW2013 template. Now for SOLIDWORKS files it's critical that you use a native SOLIDWORKS part assembly or drawing versus a SOLIDWORKS template. And the reason for this is that whenever the template grabs a file, it's not going to use SOLIDWORKS to take a template and convert it. It's going to take the file that's presented or that's selected in the options, copy it, rename it, write all of the different variables into that file's custom properties, and then save it into the vault automatically. So if we used a SOLIDWORKS template, then we would be the end result would be an automated template, but it would not be a native SOLIDWORKS file that we could actually open or use. Um, you know, the part number, any, any sort of metadata that we had captured in the template would be lost. So for that reason, it's critical that you use a native SOLIDWORKS file if you're going to create a file template for SOLIDWORKS parts. So you can see that I can map to the template source file, and then it gives me the file name. I can modify the file name as it's going to its final file name that will be used whenever it's um, place in the vault. In this case, I wanted to use the project serial number. On the right side, I can pull from any number of the template variables that are, um, that are captured during runtime. So I can, rather than type it in, I can just grab that. Notice that it puts percents on either side, percent signs on either side of the variable for me. Um, typically, you don't want to expand variables in the file too for SOLIDWORKS files. That's basically just for, for non-relational files. SOLIDWORKS files don't work well with that option. So then the next step is to map all the different template variable values into the file or just the information that I want to capture. So things like project location, project name, and so on are, are things that I would want to consistently have written from the parent project into the file so that if the file ever got moved, we knew exactly where the file came from. However, something like description, because it's going to be unique to the file versus to the project, we don't have to copy that variable into the file. So go ahead and say OK. And since we're modifying our existing template, um, rather than give it the name, I'll just go ahead and, and add something to uh, maybe add C part to the file name. That way we don't, we're not just left with a part with the project number in it. Since we're modifying the existing template, we don't really have to do much else. Um, so whenever we run this again, that file is going to be created in the CAD data project. So let's go ahead and jump back out to Windows Explorer and take a look at how this works. Right clicking again, go to new, new project, and go ahead and put in a new project name. Notice that the project number has incremented. Previously it was P00125, now it's P00126. And then we'll give a description just to distinguish it from the previous project that we created. So then looking at the file examining the folder, you can see that my SOLIDWORKS file was named with the project name 
dash C part, and then that the, the variables that it could write to the file, things like project name, project location, were captured. Um, if I select on the preview, you can also get to the variables uh, that were written into the configurations on the right side. So just to recap the file creation, uh, you just go ahead and select the file that you want as a C part, map the variables. Um, optionally, you can show the file data card if you want the data card presented to the user so that they can enter in the data uh, specific to the file card. You can do that during the runtime as well. Um, you can share the file out to other folders um, or disable the standard serial number generation for this particular part file. But, uh, that concludes this DDI CADcast. Thanks for watching.